Hello again, rail fans. I hope you're having a good summer so far. I certainly am. It's been a little toasty here in Florida, but it, it always is every summer. Got a new addition to the fence back there. Welcome to Harmon Road. That was sent to me by Nathan Jordan. He wrote and told me that the crews in his neighborhood were replacing all of the street sign markers. And when they were replacing the one on Harmon Road, he asked them if he could have the old one. And they said yes. He got it, packed it up, shipped it to me. Now it's on the fence back there. So thank you so much, Nathan Jordan. Nathan's a fan of the channel and uh, much, much appreciated. All right, let's get on to the business now. A lot of folks recently have asked me about defect detectors. New rail fans with scanners have heard the, uh, the talking voice on the radio near them. Uh, they're all over the country. Um, the defect detector spitting out uh, mile posts or axle counts or lengths or other information uh, about the, uh, the trains that have just passed. Defect detectors. They are an integral part of railroading and have been for decades and they are also an integral part of rail fanning. So let's take a look and I'll show you how. It's a hot Saturday morning in July. Train M452 is backing into CSX's Winston Yard in Lakeland, Florida. He's midway on his daily run from Miami to Waycross, Georgia, stopping here to drop some cars and pick up some others. This train, more than a mile and a half in length today, is typical of American freight rail in 2022. That's a mile and a half of rail cars that go largely unseen and unfelt during the trip. Car inspectors check the train before it leaves the originating terminal, but after it gets out on the main line, things can go wrong, and sometimes do. Each rail car has two trucks, each with two axles and four wheels. The axles spinning on roller bearings, brakes with multiple moving parts, brake hoses that carry compressed air from car to car to operate those brakes, draft gear, that's the coupler assembly on each end of each car, which the entire train depends on the closer you get to the locomotive. If any of these parts fail while the train is on its way, the result can be anything from a minor train separation all the way up to a catastrophic derailment with loss of life and a hazardous material spill. The end of train device monitors air pressure and car motion and will notify the crew by radio if there's a loss of train line air brake pressure or if the train comes apart. And these devices have averted many a mainline incident. But that is all info after the fact. It's important to detect a problem before it becomes a disaster. The answer is to check the train at intervals along its journey. That's the job of the train defect detector. Here at Campville, Florida, on the ex-seaboard airline main to Tampa and Miami, is a typical defect detector. These installations normally have several types of sensors. Infrared scanners to measure axle and wheel hub temperature. Sensors that watch the wheels as they pass over, looking for flat spots and cracks. And flaps that will swing down and trip the detector if any dragging equipment crosses over them. The bungalow houses the controlling appliances, which are connected to a VHF radio. It broadcasts, in a synthesized voice, a report after each train movement. CSX has recently upgraded its DD radio antennas to these Sinclair folded dipole designs. These apparently point the signal up and down the track rather than 360 degrees. It's the general goal of railroads to have a defect detector every 20 miles on the main line. The Seaboard Airline was one of the first, if not the first, railroad in the U.S. to deploy talking defect detectors, devices that announce their test results on the dispatcher phone circuit and later over the radio with a pre-recorded voice. The bungalow for the old SAL Talking DD still stands here at Campville. Journal boxes were enclosures on train wheel assemblies that held grease that kept the bearings lubricated. If the grease melted out, the friction bearing would start to heat up, and soon you'd have a problem. 
This is an old SAL caboose that's been stuffed and mounted next to the Seaboard Airline main at Waldo, Florida, milepost S690. No 452, engine 5331, entering the Townsend's Work Authority. To see a modern defect detector in action, we're about 129 miles south of Waldo at Knights, Florida, on that same Seaboard Airline main at milepost S818.9. Here we have essentially the same setup that we saw at Campville. Infrared sensors to check axle and bearing temperature, the dragging equipment flaps, and the wheel impact load detectors. It's early afternoon now and we've got a green northbound signal. That M452 train we saw backing in this morning has finished his work at Winston and is rolling north toward Waycross. CSX M452 got a clear distance of 9331. We got lucky here cause 452 is creeping along at 10 miles an hour through a slow order about a half a mile back there. Now you can't really see anything happening while it goes over the DD, but this angle shows the proximity of the sensors to the train wheels. That scanner is reading the temperature of each wheel as it passes above. If it detects a hot bearing, the DD will immediately transmit a warning on the radio. Here's what it sounds like when the defect detector catches a problem. CSX detector, milepost 756.8, you have a defect. CSX detector, milepost 756.8, B3 Niner dragging equipment near axle 52 Niner total axle. 674 blink 11076 detector out. This one was a dragging cut lever. I caught that in 2017 on a northbound freight at Oxford just north of Wildwood. When M452 finally clears the DD, the appliance inside the bungalow compiles the data and in about 21 seconds makes a radio report. CSX Equipment defect detector. Milepost 818.9er. No defects. No defects. Total axle 368. End of transmission. Upon hearing this report, M452 is clear to keep going. This digitally synthesized voice is relatively new on the DDs. Up until about 2015, most were still pre recorded human voices. Here's what Knights sounded like in the early 1990s. CSX, Knights, Florida. No defect. Total axle. Four, four, eight, length, seven, four, seven, one. I know you're wondering, and I was too, why those flappers are hand numbered here and I don't have the answer. Up through about mid 20th century, Seaboard maintained a station here at nights. It was on passenger timetables through the 60s, but no trains stopped here. There was a siding here, but it was pulled up around 2000. A propane dealer still had rail service, but that went away when the siding did. A piece of that track remains in the ground today. It even has a derail still protecting this unconnected track. A new night siding was built about a mile north of here in 2013. On the Atlantic Coastline, Maine, between Jacksonville and Folkestone, Georgia, now the CSX A line, are several defect detectors. A double track main, each track has a DD and reports as either track one or track two. Here at Dial Hill is another typical DD installation. Train U72805 is coming northbound on track one. 728 is carrying a U symbol today as it's either an extra or a recrew. It's normally L728, a local turn from Jack's Moncrief to Waycross and back. It's a big one today, and just like every freight train everywhere, the crew in the cab really has no idea if there are any problems developing back there. The DDs are a line side checkpoint to help alleviate the uncertainty.
Defect detector will check both freight and passenger trains and even some on-track equipment. This DD at Dial Hill has one of the first synthesized voices. CSX detector, mile post, 619.5, track main one, no defects, repeat, no defects, total axles, niner, one, six, detector out. One of my favorite defect detector voices was a guy I nicknamed the old man. He sounds like that guy you worked for who was respected throughout the company as the absolute authority. Here he is on the DD at Winter Haven, Florida. CSX, equipment, defect, detector, milepost, 829.3, no defects, total axle, 5, 6, speed, 8, 1, length of train, 1, 1, 6, 7, end of transmission. The old man is gone now, or at least his voice is. May he rest in peace. CSX has bumped up the defect detector state-of-the-art with an all-new train checking system. In early 2020, they deployed their first train inspection portal at Race Pond, Georgia. This installation is 21 miles southeast of Rice Yard and Waycross. Built by Duo's Technology, it has more than 20 high-speed machine vision cameras and high-intensity lighting. The cameras image the train while it passes through at speed. The system then pieces all the images together to make a single image of each freight car. That image is then scanned by inspection software that looks for irregularities. Train B63804 is returning empty ethanol tanks from Tampa, Florida to Bensonville, Illinois. The engineer doesn't have to slow down or make any changes as he enters the portal. It all happens at track speed. If any trouble is found, an alarm goes off and the proper people are notified. And this all happens in just a few seconds. At 5,700 feet, running at what looks like about 50 miles an hour, it takes B638 one minute and nine seconds to pass through the inspection portal. Did you notice on that tank train that there were two hopper cars, one on each end of it, one in between the locomotives and then one on the bottom? Those are called buffer cars. They're required by the rules to put some space in between hazmat cars, in this case ethanol tanks, and the locomotives. Now there's one on the top, obviously, to space out the cars uh, between the, the head-end engines, and one on the bottom for when the train is in terminal uh, and uh, a locomotive, a terminal locomotive, hooks on and either shoves it into tracks or pulls it out. So you've got uh, those buffer cars. That's what uh, those are, and that's why they're there. Those, they're often hopper cars. They are often partially filled with sand to give them some heft so that they can run, they're not completely empty, so they can run either on the top of the train or on the bottom end. And that's what buffer cars are all about. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Please write your comments in the comments section down below. I read them all. I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. So, let's make plans to meet up again somewhere out there on the high iron. And until we do, this is Danny Harmon.